Hello everyone. In this video we're going to talk about the pumping lemma and its formalization in Koch. So before we start introducing the pumping lemma, I want us to first define a notion known as the language pump. And the language pump takes two parameters, which is an existing language L and the pumping length P, which is just a natural number. Okay, so these are these two parameters. So the return of this is a language, and w, the word w, is in the language pump of LP if four conditions happen. So the first one you need to show that w can be described in or divided into three substrings, right? So you have x followed by y followed by z, where the c dot operator here, the uh, center dot, is the concatenation or the append in there. So you can see here the append of cock, as you all know. So these are x, y, and z are lists of characters that you define. So you can divide w into these three parts. And then the middle part, y, is non-empty. Okay, so w, y, the, sorry, the, the middle part in, in your partitioning has to be non-empty. And x, y, the first two sections of the of the string, have to have at, mo at most p characters. Okay, so x and y have to have a length of at most p. And then the following must be true. Okay, which is that notion that we were talking about before, the pumping notion, which is saying formally that for any i, x of y to the to the i followed by z, this whole string is in the language L, right? This L parameter here. So that's what we're saying. We're saying that the strings that are in pump of L are all the strings that are, that have been, um, that can be pumped for any i, okay? So these are the strings that go through the cycle that we talked about in the previous cycle, right? So we say that, for instance, 1, 1, 0, 0 is in the pump of the language of this, right? Where P would be 4 in that case, okay? And it's because 1, 1, 0 is in pump of L, that means that for any I, for any I, I can pump this Y as many times as I want, okay? So to recap, pump of L will be a subset of the language that we care about where all the strings can be pumped or go through the cycle go through one cycle and all those strings as we know can be pumped as many times as you want okay so that's what it means formally okay so here again to recap is the subset of l such that all the words in pump of l can be pumped Okay, so now we're ready to define the pumping lemma, and it's very simple once you understand what pump means. So what we're saying is, if a language L is regular, there exists some length that is non-negative, sorry, non-zero, uh, greater than <laughs> zero, so one or more, one or greater, um, such that any string that is in that um, language L that has at least length P is also pumpable, right? So what this means is that the string is pumpable. And what we're saying is for any regular language, there is a certain length at which every word that, ha that meets that uh, length is pumpable, right? So P is in pump means P is pumpable. Okay, so this is interesting. So there, this is this interesting property that holds true for all regular languages. So these are the languages that we've learned so far that can be described with regular expressions and can be described with MFAs and can also be described with DFAs. So one may wonder, oh, that's, yeah, we only talked about languages that have loops, right? They have either a, a, a star if it's a regular expression. So what about languages that do not have loops? Well, for languages that do not have loops, this property still holds, right? Because if you think about it, there is a length. If, if there is no loop in your language, 
then for sure there is a maximum st string length that all words can be accepted, right? So you can basically bound, right? If you don't have loops, basically you're only going to have union of words, right? And concatenation. But that means you can all you can pre-compute and know that your language is finite and it has a certain amount of strings. And if you go through all of those strings, you can find the longest string. Okay, so in say that the longest string has a length of k. Cool. So if you take k to be the pumping length to be k plus 1, that means that all words that are in L that have a length of at least p, which is k plus 1, are also in the pumping length. And this is true because no word is in L that has at least that length, right? Because this is finite, and I pick the length that is bigger than any word in that uh, language, which means this result is vacuously true. There's no element there, but it's still true. What is interesting is, of course, the cases where whenever you have a loop, then this is obviously true, and this, this loop here, this for all here, is non-empty, right? As we showed before, for this language, if you have at least a size of four, then you have to go through a loop and therefore all strings that are, have at least length 4 are pumpable. That's what we're saying. Okay, so in the next video what we're going to see is how do we use this pumping lemma to actually prove that a language is not regular?